upstairs. You know, I, I, we pay attention to the players and the coaches, and they're the ones you interview, and you buy the jerseys of players, you know, not general managers. But this league's all about upstairs. If you can't get your act together upstairs, um, you know, the Lakers have had nothing but trouble since uh, the great uh, Dr. Buss passed away, handed the franchise to his kids, and they just haven't made great decisions uh, on coaches, on players, on executives. Lakers aren't as formidable upstairs. Nothing against Jeannie Buss. She's on the operation side, not the basketball side. But it, it's you see this all the time. Uh, for a long time, Al Davis, I thought, hurt the Raiders at the end of his life. Um, Cincinnati always feels like it's limited upstairs. Pittsburgh does not feel. Green Bay doesn't have an owner. Dallas and New England have aggressive owners. Rams have an aggressive owner, Stan Kroenke. So, I mean, this offseason has really defined why the Philadelphia Eagles uh, are going to be at the top, uh, first or second place, playoff team, win the division, or a wild card team for the next decade. They're really smart. They had a great offseason. Uh, they passed on Golden Tate. This is a great example. They brought in Golden Tate, didn't give up anything for him. They got a couple of good playoff moments out of Golden State and at uh, Golden Tate, and they bailed on him. And the New York Giants, who don't know what they're doing, massively overreached and gave him four years and a ton of money. Uh, you know, this is why the New York Giants right now are a second-tier franchise. I've been saying this. I think they have the second-worst winning percentage over the last five years, next to like Detroit or Cleveland, this is a bad football operation in New York. And a great stockbroker knows when to buy a stock, but the great ones know also when to sell a stock. And Nick Foles, they got, they squeezed every ounce of talent out of Nick Foles, and then they let the Jags overpay for him. Jacksonville doesn't have the coaches, the offensive line. They don't have the general manager of Philadelphia. And Nick Foles is going to go down to Jacksonville and not play up to his contract. It's guaranteed. And Golden Tate is not going to have the quarterback in New York. Uh, he's not going to have the tight end, Zach Ertz, deflecting some of the coverage. He's not going to have the Giants O-line. not the Philadelphia O-line. And frankly, the Philadelphia Eagles, Howie Roseman's uh, as good as any GM in the league. As good as any GM in the league. Chris Ballard of the Colts, uh, Kansas City, uh, Bruce Veach, uh, Ballard, uh, uh, Howie Roseman. These guys are as good as anybody in this league. And th this, this is a classic example of a really smart team, Philadelphia, picking a stock, getting a little out of it, and selling it, and the sucker coming buying it. And Jacksonville with Foles. Nick Foles will never be as good in Jacksonville as the man as and, and and you and you look at the NFC East right now. This is why the Eagles are going to be at the top of it. And in Dallas, by the way, I think is is much less dysfunctional than everybody claims. Washington, once again in free agency, dysfunctional. Giants, I have no idea what they're doing. Joe Br Joe Banner was an executive in that division for years with Philadelphia for like 17 years, and he built a consistent winner. Uh, Joe Banner got fired eventually, but Joe Banner built a consistent winner for 17 years in Philadelphia. And, you know, he said yesterday on the Giants, uh, what are they doing? This week alone, he said, we have a plan. Well, no kidding. Everybody has a plan. It's a good plan. So I just have no idea what they're doing. And then if you break down the individual evaluations, decisions they've made in the last year, well, were they going for it last year or not? You trade a draft pick to get Ogletree, who can't cover anybody who's making $10 million a year but you're building a team for the future, you can win and rebuild at the same time. Of course you can, but there's nothing you're doing that indicates you're going to be able to do that effectively. And then the Eli thing, I mean, you know, listen, it's great to be loyal to a player that's given you so much, but at some point you've got to start to make the decisions that are in the best interest of the 50 and 60 players who are standing there right now risking their health and well-being every day they're on the field. Yeah, Giants just don't know what they're doing, and Philadelphia uh, really used them. Golden Tate's a great defining example. Uh, I want to shift to this. Marvin Lewis coached in the uh, NFL for a long time. He said he would not draft Kyler Murray as the number one pick at quarterback. Uh, it was not that Marvin Lewis didn't think Kyler Murray had talent, but Marvin Lewis touched on something that's a reality in the NFL that never gets talked about. Uh, that if you draft Kyler Murray, you have to start from scratch. You put in a completely different offense. Uh, you're drafting different players, and you just did that with Josh Rosen. I will say this on the whole Kyler Murray situation is that it is remarkable how often teams bail on people, young people. 
Never forget, Giannis averaged seven points a game as a rookie. Jimmy Butler, two and a half. Paul George, seven. Troy Aikman was 0 and 11 and had nine TDs and 18 interceptions. Derek Carr lost his first 10 games. Antonio Brown's rookie year, he had 16 catches. Not in a game for the season, he had 167 yards. Peyton Manning was 3 and 13 and led the NFL in picks. Who in God's name would have won in Arizona last year? They went through two coordinators, had a defensive coach. The coaches were over their head. Who would have won there last year? And what's funny is we've seen the Josh Rosen thing. We saw it with the Rams. Thin frame, Pac-12 quarterback, came in, Goff and Josh Rosen, came from some money, struggled under a defensive-minded head coach rookie season. We've seen this before. You know, I... By the way, the Arizona Cardinals did not start the year with Josh Rosen. He finished the year. And if you looked at the Arizona Cardinals numbers, when, by the way, they were going through all this chaos with coaching, they were a much better team with Josh Rosen. 0-3 without him, 3-10 with him. Six points a game without him, 16 with him. 190 yards without him, 250 with him. Passing yards went up 30%. So they were a much better team with Josh Rosen. And now the problem is, I think once, what decision would I make? Well, once you hire Cliff Kingsbury, you got to ask Cliff, who do you like? Because you've handed the franchise over to Cliff Kingsbury. If he doesn't work, everybody's getting fired there. They're cleaning out the building. Steve Kime's done. They're all done. So it comes down to what is Cliff Kingsbury like? I would not have hired Cliff Kingsbury. Uh, I think uh, he has not proven uh, he's a successful college coach. Uh, he's a He's a good quarterback guy. But, you know, Freddie Kitchens in Cleveland work well with Baker Mayfield. Doesn't mean he's a head coach. So what would I do? I would ask Cliff Kingsbury, once he was in-house, who do you like? But Marvin Lewis said, no, thanks for a reason. Got to start from scratch, different ideology, different offense. Uh, you'll build your line differently. You'll build the defense differently. Uh, Josh Rosen became a starter in week four last year. Just a reminder, Arizona was much better offensively in the middle of chaos. He was a better quarterback, Josh Rosen, than Jared Goff was his first year. Hour two next. Narrow Spence, he's doing things that not your normal fire does.